friends, it's Miss Amy with West Virginia University Extension Service Family Nutrition Program. Welcome to Learn, Grow, Eat, and Go. Today, we're going to be talking all about tomatoes. Are you familiar with my plate? What part of my plate do you think tomatoes go into? They go into the vegetable category on my plate because of the nutrients they provide to our bodies. Tomatoes are full of folate, potassium, and vitamin C. Folate helps us build healthy bones and teeth. Potassium helps our muscles move. And vitamin C helps us have a healthy immune system. I have with me plum or Roma tomatoes. Let's take a look inside and see what it looks like. Wow! Inside of the tomato is very wet, and you can see tiny seeds inside this jelly surface. Let's take another slice. So this type of tomato, a Roma or a plum tomato, also can be called a paste tomato. They don't have a very large meaty center like you would a slicing tomato. They're more used to make pastas. Let's take a bite. Mmm. That is a good tomato. Tomatoes are very juicy and they have a thin skin on the outside. You can eat tomatoes raw, remember to always wash your fruits and vegetables, or like I said, these tomatoes are often used to make pasta sauces. So where did tomatoes come from? We know we can find them at the farmer's market and the grocery store, but how do they grow? Let's go explore a farm to learn a lot about how tomatoes grow. I'm Penny Goff with Grits Midway Greenhouse and I'm uh, one of the owners and one of the third generation family member. We are in the hydroponic greenhouse facility of Grits Midway Greenhouse. And this is one and a half acres of tomatoes only in this facility. So we, we have 15,000 plants in here and every week we pick about a pound and a half per plant off. There's a couple reasons that you want to produce hydroponically. Number one, it, you can grow more tomatoes in less space. You use a lot less water for irrigation, so you're saving water. Plus, um, you can grow in more um, cooler seasons where outside you're, you're dependent upon the weather and frost. Um, this particular way is in coconut fiber. So this is a ground up coconut fibers and the roots can go in there and as the water comes on, they take the food that they want and the rest of it leaves the bag. We're growing what is called a beef steak tomato, which is basically a slicer tomato. We do them in red and we do them in yellow. The tomatoes come in about a foot tall and we clip them to a string that you'll see wrapped around them. Um, this, they, once a week, we bring a little clip in and clip the plants and they keep growing up taller and taller that way, it can reach an average about 68 degrees a day. Um, so it will get hotter in the afternoon, so we'll cool down a little bit in the evening. Yeah, we, we have, the roofs are covered with actually two layers of plastic, which we use two layers to provide insulation. There's also roof vents up there that when it, on a warm day, those open up to let cooler air in. And then also there's a, heat blanket up there that pulls across at night to keep um, the house warmer. Um, we do use beneficial insects. Um, because we're in an enclosed area, we have no way to pollinate. There's not wind and other bees and insects around. So we buy um, bumblebee hives, which um, come in and the bees work to do all the pollination in here. We use bumblebees instead of other types of bees because they're less aggressive. They stay here and work for um, their life cycle, which is about eight to 10 weeks. We buy the good bugs to eat the bad bugs so that we don't have to spray. Our bees don't like spray, number one, and we don't want to spray our fruits. So they come in 
on this little card. This is the larva of the, it's called Incarcia, and we bring them in and we hang them on a leaf, and then they hatch out and go looking for the larva of the white fly. When they will lay their egg in the white fly larva, which is a pale whitish green color. So once, if you get an episode of white flies, you'll start noticing that instead of white dots on the bottom of the leaf, it'll be all those little black dots from these. 85% of our crop go to Kroger stores in West Virginia and then probably a good 15% go to schools in Putnam, Kanawha, Wayne, sometimes Cabell County. And then the rest are sold either just in our grocery store or in our retail store or some other small grocery stores. Today, our story will be, What Will Grow? Written by Jennifer Ward and illustrated by Susie Germani. Rolly round, rain-soaked ground, what will grow? Peas. Seed sow in a row, what will grow? Lettuce. Shiny brown, bumpy crown, what will grow? Oak tree. Fluffy white taking flight, what will grow? Dandelion. Very tiny, then so viney, what will grow? Tomato. Stripy black, crunchy snack, what will grow? Sunflower. Soft hairy on the prairie, what will grow? Milkweed. Peck, peck, peck. Dark speck. What will grow? An apple tree. Oval flat. Soon fat. What will grow? Pumpkin. Flowery fruit. Orange root. What will grow? Carrot. Beige bead, chunky seed, what will grow? Radish. Snug tight, paper light, what will grow? Pine tree. Dark deep, fast asleep, what will grow? my garden. The end. Hi everybody, I'm Miss Shannon and today for our physical activity we're going to be doing garden yoga. I hope you enjoy. We're going to start by smelling the garden. Gardens are full of plants and flowers that smell beautiful. Take a deep breath through your nose and slowly exhale through your mouth. Do this five times. Now we're going to do seed pose. Pretend to be a seed in the garden. Sit back on your heels and bring your forehead down to rest on the floor. Hold that position while I count. One, two, three. Now we're going to do the root pose. Pretend to grow a root. Squat with your knees apart and arms resting between your knees. Hold that position while I count. One, two, three. Next, we're gonna do the stem and leaf pose. Pretend to grow into a stem with leaves. Slowly stand with your feet apart and stretch your arms out. Stretch your body and your arms, wiggle your fingers, and then wiggle your toes. Rock from one foot to the other. Last, let's do some wind breathing. Let's move with our breathing as the wind moves the plants. 
Stand up, raise both arms out to the sides of your body. As you inhale, move your arms up. As you exhale, move your arms down. Let's do this five times. Thanks everybody for joining me for garden yoga. Have a great day and namaste. Hi friends, today's activity is going to be rainbow roots. I have an example of what we're going to make here. For this activity, you will need a color, colorful pipe cleaners, you will need a sheet of paper, and you will need to push a hole through the paper. Now this can either be done with a hole punch or you could just push a pencil through, have a parent help you if you need. And then something to color with. You can either use um, markers, you can use crayons, you could use paint, anything that you would like. So the first thing is to go ahead and put your pipe cleaners through the hole made in your paper. You'll want to bend the pipe cleaners so that way they hold in place for you. I like to bend them and then kind of twist them around each other so that way they stay really nice and snug. So these are our roots of our plant. Now we know roots grow all different types of directions and we know that our nutrients need to be as colorful as a rainbow to give our bodies the nutrients that we need to stay healthy. So that's why we're using a few colors. Now you can bend and twist these any way you would like to get them to stay on your paper. Try to get mine to stay where I want them. So that way when it's flattened out, it will stay on my paper. And then the next thing on our plant is a stem. We'll want to put a stem on. Now remember our stem moves the nutrients up our plant. We also have leaves. Which help use the process of photosynthesis to feed our plant. And then we will draw a really big flower. And there is our rainbow roots. You can use whatever colors you would like to make your flower or your roots. You can use either paint and crayons, you can use markers, whatever you have available. And remember, if you make this activity and your parents can take a photo of it, you can tag us on Facebook or Instagram. Thanks for joining us for today's activity. Let's go visit Molly in the kitchen and learn how to make bruschetta. Hi, I'm Molly with West Virginia University Extension Family Nutrition Program, and today we're going to make a garlic tomato bruschetta. This is one of my most favorite recipes. I've already washed my hands and my ingredients for our recipe in the cooking surface so I'm all ready to get started. The first thing we're gonna do is take a one pound loaf of French bread and slice it and toast it under the broiler or in the toaster. And I'm gonna cut thin pieces. A bread knife works best with a serrated edge so you don't end up squashing it. You could certainly use a whole grain baguette if you could find that. I've got my loaf cut and I'm going to put these cut side up on a lined baking sheet. I've got my oven preheated to 350 degrees. It is going to crisp up very quickly. The next thing I'm going to do is add our garlic. The recipe calls for three or four cloves of garlic. Now, depending on the size of your garlic, <laughs> runaway garlic, 
you could have a little teeny tiny clove or you could have a big huge clove. So you kind of have to just decide how garlicky you want it. Um, I think I'm going to do two of these rather large ones. So when you take the garlic off the bulb, it's covered in like a paper. To remove that, you could sit there and pick it all off, but I like to put my chef's knife on top of it and hit it with the palm or the heel of your hand and that separates the skin right away from your garlic. So easy. So then we've got your clove of garlic and I'm just going to make slices and then once I've got my thin slices, I'm gonna kind of turn it around, go the other way, keep the tip of my knife down on my board and really just move my wrist and kind of do a rocking motion. So that's two rather large cloves of garlic. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my bowl and I'm gonna check on my bread. It's almost ready, not quite. Needs to be nice and toasted so that it can hold up to everything we're gonna be piling on top of it. So next I've got my fresh basil. And when we cut fresh basil, you wanna remove it from the stem and kind of spread out our leaves. Then to cut our fresh basil, you wanna stack up your pieces and then we're going to kind of roll it up. And now I'm gonna run my knife through it and make a chiffonade. And I'm just going to very lightly go through my roll. And again, I'm not, I don't wanna push too hard, be too forceful. Isn't that gorgeous? So I'm gonna add this to the garlic. And next we've got our tomatoes. We're using a Roma tomato. They aren't as juicy as like a slicing tomato, which is good because we don't want too much liquid. When I cut a tomato, I'm gonna cut the tip off so that it's flat. And now I'm going to make two more flat surfaces, just like that. I'm going to now go cut um, half moon shapes and then stack those up and cut chunks and then run my knife through, keeping the tip down and my fingers out of the way and just kind of get a nice dice with that tomato. Okay, I've just diced my four medium-sized Roma tomatoes, and I'm gonna add that to my bowl. Now I'm gonna add about a quarter teaspoon of salt. We really want to go easy on the salt at first, definitely, because we're also gonna add some Parmesan cheese, which is a very salty cheese. So add a little bit of salt, a couple of cranks of fresh ground black pepper, a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil, and a quarter cup of freshly grated Parmesan cheese. It definitely is cheaper to buy a block of Parmesan cheese and grate it yourself. Then we're gonna mix that all together. And we want to refrigerate this for an hour to let all the flavors come together. So I've removed our bruschetta mixture from the refrigerator and it smells so good. Our bread is toasted and I'm going to put them on the plate. Now we toasted these to help hold the bread up to this mixture that we're going to add. It, uh, after it was refrigerated, it brought out some of the juices. That is gonna get absorbed into this toasty bread and just knock your socks off. 
and I'm just going to place, I would say, about a tablespoon on each piece. And now I'm ready to dig into one. Mm. I've had people tell me they don't even like tomatoes and love this bruschetta. I hope you check out our website for the full recipe and our YouTube channel for more videos. Thank you for joining me today in the kitchen and I hope you give tomatoes and this garlic tomato bruschetta recipe a try. Today has been a lot of fun. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time. I hope you guys had a great time learning all about tomatoes today. To wrap things up, I decided to come down to my buddy Justin's music shop at Folklore Music Exchange in Charleston to play you guys a song about my favorite vegetable. Or is it a fruit? There ain't nothing in the world that I like better than bacon and lettuce and homegrown tomatoes. Up in the morning, out in the garden, pick you a ripe one, don't pick a hard one, plant them in the spring, eat them in the summer, all winter without them's a culinary bummer. I forget all about the sweating and digging, every time I go out and pick me a big and homegrown tomatoes. Homegrown tomatoes, what would life be without homegrown tomatoes? There's only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. Go out and eat them, that's for sure. But it's nothing a homegrown tomato won't cure. Put them in a salad, put them in a stew. You can make your very own tomato juice. You can eat them with greens, you can eat them with gravy. Eat them with beans, pinto or navy. Put them in the side, put them in the middle. Put a homegrown tomato on a hot cake griddle. Homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? There's only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love and homegrown tomatoes. Now if I could change this life I lead, I'd be Johnny Tomato Seed. Cause I know what this country needs, it's homegrown tomatoes in every yard you see. So when I die, don't bury me in some box in a cemetery. Out in the garden would be much better than I could be pushing up home. Tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? There's only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love. And homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes, homegrown tomatoes. What would life be without homegrown tomatoes? There's only two things that money can't buy, and that's true love. And homegrown tomatoes.